everybody, John and Be Good here. Good afternoon. We are currently located in Brea, Kentucky. I almost said Brea, California. Uh -huh. Local time here is 11.54. And uh, temperature according to blue is 72. Although, Google says 68 degrees. says it's 68 degrees I am now about 349 miles to trade water Boulevard uh, in uh, Atlanta Georgia trade water is right there by oh not too far from the Petro on uh, what is that 475 What's up bypass there in in fact you have to take 20 west one exit then you take that south anyway happy happy Easter everybody Jesus Christ has risen therefore for those who are in Christ can also rise it is the reason that he lives so you and I and anyone out there who chooses to believe regardless of what they feel can obtain that forgiveness and salvation I've got a story to tell you I came up with a little bit uh, a while ago now Forgive me, I, I'm not one of the greatest storytellers by no means, so yeah, I'll, I'll try to do it as eloquently and as slowly and as detailed as I can. Hold on. There, how's that? Alright, the story is about two young boys. One was a, uh, one belonged to a very wealthy family. Very, very rich family. And he, one day he and his friend, who is the son of his butler, went out cruising around on Friday night well the son of the butler was just tagging along and uh, this rich kid well he kind of bought his friends he was one of those spoiled brat uh, son so anyway one night one Friday night they went all over town they you know they did whatever teenagers did Friday nights and uh, as they were cruising around the uh, neighborhood they saw this uh, liquor store well for some reason this rich kid even though he had a lot of money he decided to rob the liquor store and in the process killed the clerk there was no absolutely no reason for that rich kid to rob that liquor store he just wanted to because he thought it was exciting you know, we live in a world that, uh, hey, do whatever is exciting, do whatever it feels good, just do it. So he did, the clerk died, and I tell you what, they were both on cameras. In fact, the camera was a Sony HDRAS15, 
it was a very high def camera <laughs> so anyway the cop comes by arrest both of them and uh, the next following morning you know the arraignment comes well at this point the lawyers I mean the cops separated the two that way they can't come up with a story you know that you know how court process goes right well finally they uh, the rich kid was bailed after a few hours unfortunately the uh, the poor kid he had no money to bail himself out and the rich kid forgot about him well needless to say the poor kids stuck in prison or in jail until the court hearing came up luckily the court hearing was 10 days later well as you can imagine the rich kid had three lawyers money the best money could buy I mean he had his lawyers from Harvard he had lawyers from Princeton he had the best lawyers in the country defending him but it was an it was a very damning evidence against him because they were on video there were witnesses and across the other aisle was the poor kid the poor kid was assigned a public dependent and uh, the poor kid his lawyer was just fresh out of school just got his exam uh, he's got his license and and this new newbie lawyer was just he wasn't even interested he was he was hopeless because of all, all the evidence was against them it was all right there I mean, to his mind what can I do to defend this guy I mean you know it was a hopeless case in his part right and he dreaded the idea that it was his first defense uh, case which in his mind I don't want to have a, the, my first case to be the loss, you know. So anyway, his lawyer quit, leaving him all alone in the court. Well, the rich kid finally realized, hey, that, that kid needs a lawyer too. So he writes a note, says, hey, why don't you come over here? We'll, we'll use our lawyer to defend you. To which the poor kid says, Okay, thank you. Now, the judge, the judge was a very old judge, but he was a very serious judge. And he was the kind of judge that don't take BS from nobody. The judge says, Mr. John Smith, John Smith, by the way, is the rich kid. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Is okay, duly noted. Enter plea, no, gu uh, no guilty, not guilty. I'm trying my best here. I know it's kind of low. Well, let me finish it anyway. Anyway, Judge goes to says, uh, Peter Bob, how do you play? How do you plea? Which the poor kid says, uh, 
your honor, I, 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 I don't know. Well, the rich lawyer suggested that he should also plead not guilty. And just right before he was about to uh, say his plea, another public defendant walks into the courthouse. This public defendant was unshaven, long hair, and just wearing a pair of sandals. And all he had was an old, old book, a leather book. So the public dependent says, Your Honor, may I approach the bench? To which when the judge saw the public dependent, for some reason, the judge was so happy to see the public dependent as if the room lit it up so in a way the public dependent with long hair unshaven with sandals approached the bench and they had a little private conversation after a moment later the judge says Peter Bob, I would like to assign to you the public dependent, which he will take your case. Peter Bob says, yes sir, your honor. So anyway, the judge says, let the court begin. Let's, you know, let the proceeding continue or begin. And by the way, I would like to point out that the prosecutor was a very, very clever, very, very handsome guy. He was in a, the best Armadi suit uh, a money can buy. He had evidence stack up right there on his desk. He had an iron-clad, solid evidence that these two kids were guilty. And this guy, this lawyer, this, this prosecutor was slick. He was slicker than a snot on a brass doorknob, as they say. So anyway, the first public dependent, the first lawyers, the rich lawyers, they plead their case. They said, your honor, we plead not guilty because this kid has been raised in a home that they were very rich. He didn't know better. His parents never taught him right or wrong. And your honor, if you give us leniency, we will donate $30 million to the Children's Cancer Hospital. And they went on and on and on and on, all the excuses in the world to why this rich kid should not go to prison. Well, and then uh, the rich kid's lawyer says, Your Honor, we rest our case. The fate of our client is in your hands. Well, it was the first, it was the public dependence uh, turn. And to he which he leaned over to Peter Bob and say, Peter, I need you to trust me. I need you to plead guilty. Peter Bob was shocked. Like, if I plead guilty, they're gonna put me to death. Say, yes, that that is true. You will just just plead guilty just trust me and for some reason Peter Bob just had this calm feeling of spirit in him 
that trusted this public dependent that uh, all he was wearing was sandals long hair not even shaven his clothes were full of patches I mean this guy just looked like a hippie he looked like from back in the 60s and looked like he came out of a woods somewhere it says okay sir I will trust you so the judge says dependent number two how do you plead Peter Bob says I plead guilty your honor the judge says duly noted present your case Oh, without a word, the public dependent rises and says, Your Honor, may I approach the bench? And you know, we've seen that on TV where those lawyers go up to the judges and they do their private meeting and all that stuff. And The public dependent approaches the bench. Along with him was that old, old leather book. He opens the book, sets it right there by the judge's bench, and opens page number 331, which he points out something on the book to the judge. And the judge says, okay. So they, both lawyers, return to the clients. They return to the clients and uh, finally after long hours of deliberation, wait, wait, I forgot one thing, I forgot one thing. The public dependent showed the book to the judge which he pointed out something in the book and when the judge says it's entered in evidence on the way back to his client he stopped by cruised by the the jury All right picture this from the bench he walks through and by the, uh, the jury, opening the book and showing to the jury the content of the book. And you know how you show you the book to somebody facing them and uh, opening the pages with both of your hands, right? So anyway, he shows the book to the jury and he sits down and as I said, a couple hours of deliberation, the jury comes back and says, Your Honor, we have reached a verdict. And the judge says, me, I have the whatever paper that thing they call it. So the judge says, all rise, or, you know, and he reads out the sentence. John Smith, you have been found guilty of the jurors of your peers. I sentence you to death. Oh, you should have heard, you should have heard the outcry, the roaring, the yelling, and the unfair and all that your honor we we offered 30 million dollars to the cancer society and all that stuff and well the judge says I have rendered the verdict it is what it is 
so the bailiff came and took away John Smith. Oh, you should have heard John Smith cry like a baby. And to the second verdict, he says, Peter Bob, rise. So Peter Bob rises with his lawyer. Peter Bob says, I mean, the judge says, the jury has found you not guilty. And everyone was, everyone in that courtroom was shocked. And they could not understand to why one was guilty and the other one was not. Well, it turns out that, you know, anyway, the, the judge takes his gavel and says, this court is adjourned. Peter Bob started crying in joy. He was speechless. He was so happy. And he was so grateful to his lawyer. He reached out for the, the lawyer's hand to shake his lawyer's hand, to which he noticed as while he was shaking, while Peter Bob was shaking his lawyer's hand, he noticed there was a scar on his hand. And when Peter Bob looked at the lawyer's uh, feet that was only wearing sandals, there also was two scars. And for some reason, Peter's knees buckled down to the ground and realized who it was. It turns out his public defender was Jesus Christ himself. And he started worshiping Jesus Christ. As I said, I'm not a best storyteller, but I, I hope you guys get the picture. We are all guilty. We are all, all guilty. But because Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ has already paid for our penalty, for our sins, and we don't need to go to prison. We don't need to be condemned. He has paid it all. He is our public dependent. Depender. Why pay for your sin if you don't have to? Why pay for something that you could have never repay? That's something that we owe God that we don't have anything to pay with. I tell you what, the payment is there. It's been full, it's been paid in full. All you gotta do is grab it. It's kind of like having, kind of like having cancer. A man was in a hospital dying of cancer. Right next to him was a vial of an antidote or a cure. All he had to do was take that vial put it on the syringe, inject it in himself, he'll be cured. But you see, the man did not, the man refused to take the vial and take the medicine. So my question to you is, 
did the man die of cancer or did the, the man die of unbelief and stupidity? Isn't that the same? Isn't that what we are now? We don't need to die in eternity. The cure is there. Happy Easter everyone. Johnny be good here. Enjoying his bluegrass state. Although I'm still looking for the bluegrass. Peace.